हेलो एवरीवन वंस अगेन आई वेलकम एवरीबॉडी टू माय लेक्चर क्लास दिस इज डॉक्टर संगीता चौधरी हियर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पैथोफिजियोलॉजी एंड साइन एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर ओके इन माय प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट वेराइटीज ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर एंड स्टेजिंग ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर रिस्क फैक्टर्स एंड प्रिसिपिटेटिंग फैक्टर्स सो दिस क्लास इट इज़ अबाउट द pathophysiology mainly and the sign and symptoms of heart failure so let's see what is the pathophysiology of heart failure what actually happens in case of heart failure so whenever there is heart failure there will be reduced cardiac output and because of that there will be baroreceptor dysfunction baroreceptors are present in the coronary sinus and they are present in the aortic arch so because of the baroreceptor dysfunction there will be decreased efferent inhibitory signals to the brain to the vasomotor center and because of the inhibitory decrease in inhibitory signals there will be increased stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and there will be increased release of vasopressin both of them will lead to vasoconstriction increased sympathetic nervous system activity it will also lead to vasoconstriction there will be reduction in the uh peripheral blood flow as well as there'll be reduction in the renal blood flow so what happens when there is reduction in the renal blood flow because of the reduction in the renal blood flow there'll be activation of ras system now what is ras system ras system is renin angiotensin aldosterone system so because of the reduced renal blood flow ras systems will become activated and there'll be increased renin secretion ultimately the ras pathway will lead to increased formation of angiotensin 2 and then finally there will be increased level of aldosterone and what does aldosterone do aldosterone it causes sodium and water reabsorption through the kidney so as a compensatory phenomena there will be increased sodium and water reabsorption from the kidney that will be the final uh, process in the pathophysiology of heart failure for the short term this compensatory phenomena is good but at the later period of time it becomes uh, the compensation is hampered and it becomes rather dangerous for the heart because this angiotensin aldosterone they do cause cardiac remodeling they alter the cardiac geometry and because of cardiac remodeling there will be more future events and cardiac status becomes uncompensated so this is about the pathophysiology of heart failure now what are the symptoms of heart failure if i talk about the symptoms there are many symptoms of heart failure fatigue patient will say that i feel fatigued i feel very weak dyspnea which is also known as shortness of breath shortness of breath orthopnea orthopnea means shortness of breath on lying down position paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea popularly known as pnd now what is pnd pnd is also a difficulty in breathing but it occurs when the patient goes to the bed after 1 to 2 hours at night time after going to the bed after 1 to 2 hours patient will suddenly wake up and patient will be gasping for breath and as soon as the patient uh, sits up with his or her feet dangling by the side of the by the edge of the bed then after some time patient gets relieved so this is the episode of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or pnd heart failure patient they will give typical history of pnd and orthopnea cough there will be cough okay sometimes there will be sputum production in cases of pulmonary edema there will be pink frothy sputum exercise intolerance will be there chain stroke respiration patient will have other uh, systemic symptoms like anorexia nausea abdominal pain and fullness abdominal pain and fullness is because of uh, congestive hepatomegaly because of congestion due to cardiac failure there will be hepatomegaly and there will be reduced cerebral blood flow ultimately leading to confusion difficulty in concentration impairment of memory headache insomnia and anxiety so these are the symptoms of heart failure prominent symptoms are fatigue dyspnea orthopnea pnd cough exercise intolerance etc coming to the signs signs of heart failure there are general signs there will be diminished pulse pressure what is pulse pressure pulse pressure is the difference between systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure okay 
so because of cardiac failure the systolic blood pressure goes down so the difference is also reduces so there will diminished pulse pressure hypotension tachycardia cyanosis of lips and nail buds cold and pale extremities these are because of cardiogenic shock and sweating diaphoresis so these are the general symptoms of heart failure when we look at jvp that is jugular venous pressure there will be increased jugular venous pressure and neck vein will be distended or engorged and there will be positive hepatojugular reflux i already have uploaded a class on jvp i'll give the link in this description box also so please look at the jvp how we examine jvp and what is hepatojugular reflux and all so it will be jvp will be increased in case of congestive heart failure now on cardiac examination there may be displaced apical impulse there may be left parasternal impulse or heave we call it as heave okay left parasternal heave because of right ventricular hypertrophy because of cardiac failure s3 and s4 third and fourth heart sound will be audible and there may be murmurs of mr mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation depending on the situation so these are the cardiac findings or cardiac signs we may get in the lungs what we will get in the lungs we will get pulmonary rails or basal crepitation by basal crafts or crepitation there will be wheezing expiratory wheezing which is also known as cardiac asthma because of cardiac asthma there will be expiratory wheezing plural effusion usually bilateral plural effusion is there and right sided plural effusion will be usually more than the left side this is about the pulmonary findings abdomen what we will get in abdomen we will get ascites there will be congestive hepatomegaly as i said it will be enlarged tender and pulsating liver there will be congestive splenomegaly as well and there will be jaundice because of congestive hepatomegaly patient will develop jaundice cardiac ecchexia ultimately in the long run after suffering from chronic heart failure the patient will become ecchexic there will be loss of weight there will be loss of bmi there will be loss of muscle mass and pedal edema bilateral peating pedal edema will be there so these are the signs of heart failure as i was talking about bilateral pleural effusion so in this x ray we can see that there is blunting of this cardiophrenic sorry there is blunting of the costophrenic angle bilaterally so there is bilateral pleural effusion okay this is the jvp i was talking about this picture you can see the jvp is very much raised this is the internal jugular vein and there is raised jvp you can appreciate it okay and then bilateral pitting pedal edema here you can see it is pitting so bilateral pitting pedal edema of the ankle and i was talking about ascites so this is ascites so these are the few signs of congestive heart failure we can look for there is something known as framingham's criteria depending on the framingham's criteria we can diagnose a case of heart failure there are major and minor criteria it is very well known and popularly known diagnosis requires two major or one major plus two minor criteria okay if out of this uh, eight major criteria if two are present or else only one major and two minor are present we will call the patient as having heart failure so major criteria are paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea orthopnea elevated jugular venous pressure pulmonary rails third heart sound that is s3 okay then cardiomegaly on chest x ray number 6 pulmonary edema on chest x ray number 7 and lastly diuresis more than 4.5 kg weight loss in 5 days minor criteria there will be bilateral leg edema nocturnal cough dyspnea on ordinary exertion hepatomegaly pleural effusion tachycardia more than 120 beats per minute weight loss more than 4.5 kg in 5 days so this is about major and minor criteria lastly differential diagnosis of heart failure we should not uh, focus our mind only on heart failure when we see a patient with signs and symptoms we should think about other diseases also we should keep our mind broad and think about to rule out other diseases for example myocardial infarction tension pneumothorax aortic dissection pulmonary embolism asthma or copd exacerbation cardiac tamponade ruptured viscous valvular abnormalities like mitral and aortic stenosis so along with the heart failure suspicion we need to think about 
this underlying cause or this differential diagnosis also as well so this is about today's class in my next class i will discuss about uh, how do we diagnose a case of heart failure and how do we manage a case of heart failure thank you so much for attending the class